Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Last Week in Geek. I am Mr. Panda. And I'm Rockstar. She has shit taste in movies. That's the whole story. We're done with the video. In tonight's episode, we're going to start off, of course, with so many trailers. Because that's what we do here. We point you in the direction of other videos that are superior so that you can watch those. I mean, you're not wrong. A new documentary about Anton Yelchin, the dearly departed actor from the Star Trek series who played Chekhov and died in a tragic automobile accident, which seems to be something that's a repeat uh, in Hollywood these days. That's coming out on August 2nd. By absolute coincidence, Fast and the Furious, the animated series, has been announced. Now and that you mentioned it like that, I just realized this was a bad, bad order. Well, I didn't write this. It's coming out via Netflix, produced by DreamWorks, and it's going to be probably as terrible as it sounds. Disney is also hard at work. We have Descendants 3 announced featuring Hades Kid, which we hope will be as criminally sassy as his uh, progenitor, as well as a full trailer for Frozen 2, which we are all equally unenthusiastic about. There's a new show coming out exclusively for Apple TV yep. called Mythic Quest. It all focuses in on this gigantic MMORPG that's the new big thing and appears to be showing and focusing on the behind-the-scenes guys, like the creators of the game. Getting a very big The Guild vibe, though other people have noticed you might also say it has a Always Sunny vibe and this features one of the uh, actors from the main cast lineup, in fact. And Hollywood seems to be trying their hand at something new to spice up their horror genre. They're adding influencers to the mix. DeadCon, which is all about influencers going to VidCon-like events... It's totally not VidCon. That's totally not VidCon. ...has actual fashion YouTubers in this movie, and it still looks like generic horror crap. Speaking about horror movies, there's going to be a direct sequel to... Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, also based off of Stephen King's book that is also the sequel, Dr. Sleep, is going to be coming your way on the big screen November 8th. I'm waiting to see if they let Jack Nicholson just show up as a ghost. Well, I mean, they do already have the door in the trailer. Rockstar's never seen The Shining, despite numerous spoilerly references in every piece of media ever, including South Park. She's never actually... Yeah, how did you watch Ready Player One and never see The Shining? I'm not interested in that kind of movie. In more trashy horror news, that's the only way I can put this. It seems like Sci-Fi and Warner Brothers weren't ready to give up on that old FNAF script, and it seems like it was a good thing also that Scott Cawthon rejected the script, because we're getting a Banana Split movie a la FNAF style. And it's only coming to digital, apparently. It's coming to Sci-Fi Wire and Straight to Blu-ray, which shows you how much faith they have in the movie. It's called uh, Straight to My Legitimate Sources. There's a DC series that's not going to DC Universe. Pennyworth, which is all about Alfred's backstory. There's a very Michael Caine-like in the uh, guy's performance of Pennyworth, which I kind of uh, enjoy. It seems really interesting, like a Thomas Wayne spy, big Prohibition thriller. machine guns, yeah. Yeah, it, it actually looks pretty good coming to well, I guess it's more like World War II. I said Prohibition, but it's like, yeah, cartridge letters. Now for news you can really use. You may have been a critic of regular old animation. Now you gotta get that anime stuff in, but... For those of you that have a much broader appreciation for animation, whether it be historical or otherwise, the Looney Tunes, apparently, are coming back. They dropped a little bit of a shorty teaser thing, if you will. Just a very short clip between Elmer Fudd and Bugs Bunny. Very old-style feel. Got TNT music playing. Time boom, boom, booms. It's the best. It's actually much better than anything they've been doing with the Looney Tunes IP in a really long time. Hey, now, I like that new Looney Tunes series. The Wizard! Talking about remaking classics, I guess this isn't really that big of a classic. This is not a classic. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> well, speaking about continuing on in your favorite media, we're talking about The Hunger Games. Susan Collins is making a prequel novel set 64 years before the actual Hunger Games, so we get to see the Dark Ages, which we really didn't get much in the actual novels. In which... Suzanne Collins will note in an author's note that President Snow was gay the entire time. 
We're actually going to get this book pretty soon. It's supposed to be in May 2020, and it sounds like Lionsgate already has, like, their hands in deep for the big screen. So. Yeah, I'm super excited about Snow Bangs Random Guys and Alleys, the movie. That Steven Universe movie we keep hearing about, well, you will not be surprised, nor will anyone be surprised. Why are we covering this? It's going to be a musical. Because of course it is! Go figure. Who would have thought? And of course, who's going to be singing? It's like Estelle and all the other people that are a part of the show already. I think the only one that came as a surprise to me was Chance the Rapper is going to be a part of it. I'm, no, I'm not even kidding you. Like, he's the first person named. So the guy who doesn't sing is going to be first name on this singing musical. Uh-huh. Yes, I fired those shots. I mean, they could at least, like, ask Adina Menzel to, like, take a break from the other Disney movie and just do this one instead. Got a fever and the only cure is more Game of Thrones? Well, Netflix has got you covered. They're doing this very true and epic story about the warlords trying to uh, dominate Japan in their new series called Age of Samurai Battle for Japan. And that's supposed to be released later sometime this year on Netflix. So You know how Netflix is. It's just going to show up one day without any further ado. I mean, if you want a shorty news thing, like they just did that with a bunch of anime. They brought back like Madoka Kakiguri, Magica yeah. and uh, Sword Art Online. So, At least Agrotsuka got an announcement. Season 2, by the way, is very cool if you're interested. Check that out. You may recall some weeks ago we covered a story about Bethesda's snafu, to put it mildly, that new game of theirs, Fallout 76 or whatever the heck it was called. You know, the one where people just randomly dropped bombs and broke the servers. One of the main controversies underlining that entire snafu was the issue of people getting canvas bags. Just just these bags that were a collectible item, supposed to come along with it, but they were trashy, the ones that... You know, actually, literally came the trash back bags. And, yeah, literal trash <laughs> bags. Well, you'll be pleased to know, many months after the fact, a month later, in fact, from their estimated date, people finally got their canvas bags. Well, Bethesda, at least you tried. We're gonna go on and talk about the Emmys right now. Yeah, there's this very interesting part for people who actually sat down and I don't know watched Daredevil season three. I know that maybe or the Emmys of- for that matter. I know that maybe a lot of you probably didn't sit down for season three, but there was this very epic 11-minute scene of Daredevil getting out of the prison fight. It was very cool. Lots of stunts. People hoping that that will get an Emmy? Well, it's not even going to be nominated. Why? It's too long. Apparently, the Emmy for Outstanding Stunts, you're only allowed to use a three-minute clip. Could they just do the best three minutes of the 11-minute scene? I don't know. I don't understand how the Emmys work anymore, if I ever did. Even if you don't like Daredevil, I would suggest you go search out this clip. It's really good for all the stunts that happen. The craze these days seems to be retro this, retro that. Bring back all the retro consoles. Don't make them cartridge compatible, but bring them back basically just, you know, stealing emulation software developed by fans. I mean, that's cool. Whatever. On the bright side, however, this has resulted in the return of a different console than what we normally see out there on the market. Konami is bringing back the TurboGrafx-16 in mini format. This could be very interesting for those of you who have never been able to even see a TurboGrafx-16 in real life and would love to play some of the games on it. Japan will be getting a different version of the TurboGrafx-16. As well as Europe. Yeah, that's true. If you're an aficionado, you'll know that in the case of Japan, at least, that's the... Wow, why can I not remember? PC Engine and exclusive games depending on what region you're in. That's what we're focusing on. I don't know if you want to buy it or not. I don't know. I I don't know who this is supposed to appeal to. Apparently people like... Retro Gamers! You. Old Weebs. This This is marketed to old weebs. And speaking about old weebs and old feuds, there was a friendly like... Trekkie Strike Back. Trekkie Strike Back versus the Wrath of the Jedi happening on Twitter. If you're not aware of what happened, apparently NASA found something strange on the surface of Mars that kind of looks suspiciously like the Star Trek emblem, which kind of started this back and forth. First, it started off with Shatner versus at Star Wars, and then it kind of turned into a back and forth between him and Hamill. Very fascinating. I definitely go, uh, I have like part of the Twitter links down below. 
As if a sign to things to come, ThinkGeek is finally shutting down its website. Thank God. If you want to buy stuff from ThinkGeek, you have until July 2nd. After that, it is being moved to a subsection on GameStop, or you can buy stuff in their physical stores. This comes from their huge merger and stuff like that, but considering how GameStop has been doing lately, I don't expect either company to last much longer. It's basically just like with EB Games back in the day. Think Geek was the part that was making money. Just like before, EB Games was making money. Uh-huh. And since GameStop never bothered to revolutionize itself or, you know, change anything about itself other than, you know, never buying back PC games and thus expediting the downfall of the physical media market and letting Steam rise up and never bothering to offer competition, stop myself there. The point being, GameStop, I don't know if I'm going to miss you when you finally decide to upend yourself. Speaking of things that could upend themselves at any moment... There's a new article out suggesting that the anime industry is potentially going to die. They are wrecked with a ton of different problems. Animators are working 12 to 18 hour shifts per day. They are underpaid. They are under, well, not underutilized. That's the wrong word. They don't have the resources or the manpower to do what they used to be able to do more comfortably. They, they have, have a shrinkage, shrinkage of talent. The animators are getting old. They're not being replaced by new animators. The ones that are still around are starting to have health problems, uh, start facing the, you know, the, the rigors of old age, for lack of a better term. No one is being incentivized to join into the animation industry in Japan at this point. Um, already, companies are starting to outsource certain things to places like China and Korea. Um, mm -hmm. That's happening more and more. And uh, like the homegrown animation pool, it's just so much work. So little reward. The only people who are still it, have a horse in the game at this point are people like Never Retire Miyazaki, who just has to have things a particular way. Though I, I like the fact that the uh, article suggests that it's because of this shortage that Miyazaki keeps coming back. I argue it's the fact that he can't leave well enough alone that he keeps coming back. There's the Miyazaki is uh, his own league. He's not like the rest of everybody else. That being said, anime was a mistake. <sighs> It seems almost as if, in response to this issue, Toei, kind of masking this, this new contest under the 100th anniversary, is begging for new creators to make new anime. They are, literally have like three different ways that you can enter. They are asking for anybody, literally anybody, any race, any age, any gender, they don't care. We enter. Believe. Enter. Produce your own anime, see it on uh, streaming sites and or in the theater. They have a separate fourth course for people who just want to enter as a producer, director, animator, or art director. They are literally looking for people, and this contest is going to go on for a pretty long while. I have the link to the article down below and as well the link to Toei's actual contest page, which is in Japanese. So You have to be a little hardcore weeaboo to be able to enter this contest. But they are literally begging for new people in their industry. So link to the special entry page down below for those of you who can use Google Translate. Without further ado, I believe that's it for this episode. So, good night, good luck, enter the contests, and watch some trailers. Have a good night. Bye-bye!